Aaron Ash, born August 25th, 1991, better known online as Yami Mosh or Yami, is an English YouTube gamer who plays mostly horror games. He started uploading his videos in 2009 when he produced God of War 3 videos. He didn't do commentaries on them at first, but after a while he gave it a try. His first subscribers were there only for God of War and COD, but in 2012, he gave other games an opportunity. Yamimash then played Slender and other scary games, where he hit massive popularity. However, he does not just play games based on horror or puzzles, Pokemon and Minecraft are also on the list. Yamimash provides commentary and face cam on almost all of his videos. Since May 2013, he lives in his own place. Yamimash also owns a car, which is a blue 2001 Puget 206. Why that is listed on his Wikitubia fandom, I do not understand. But that's not why you're here. You're here for the juicy bits. So let's get into it. Who apparently was flirting with a 14 year old girl while he is 24. But not just flirting, he also sent her pictures of his penis. And honestly, not to sound kind of cringy here, this was really shocking news to hear, as I'm sure as a lot of, of his other fans thought of. Now, before we go into a giant story about the origin of Yami Mash, and I give you the whole 411, the compulsory history lesson and timeline of a YouTuber that every The Fall of video has to do, let me just give a little bit of my own experience of where I'm coming from looking at this YouTuber. I used to watch him all the way back in the day when PewDiePie and Markiplier first got started on YouTube. Now, these are the days back when there was only a couple channels actually playing horror games. And it was also the time where everybody would scream and yell really loud. And I think they had like an addiction to talking every second that they played a game. It was almost like they had to breathe and talk at the same time unless they died IRL, not just in the game. And they would constantly make jokes and talk about all kinds of commentary and funny stuff over their own experiences, sometimes tell life stories as they're playing, and occasionally just scream out loud, sometimes to the point of absurdity where you'd be like, I'm not really sure that's that scary, but okay. That's what I remember this guy from. When this whole thing went down, when he got busted for the act that we're about to talk about later, I was really surprised. I did not see this coming because you got to remember, this guy was held in the same light as PewDiePie and Markiplier. Two guys still around today. This guy could have also been that big. Why was he not? Let's find out. Early life and education. Yamimash apparently spent his childhood in his hometown of Warwick. According to his private Facebook account, Yamimash was a student at Leamington College. When it comes to speaking about his career as a YouTuber and gamer, he really started his channel in 2007 under the name of Yamimash, but his career as an actual YouTuber began in 2009, when he started to upload the videos mentioned before of God of War 3 and COD. As far as his beginnings are concerned, he did not do commentary and face cam until finally he realized that it would help him to increase his fan base and grow him in popularity. As the gaming industry began to expand, in 2012, Yamimash increased the number of his games such as Dream of the Blood Moon, Hotel 626, Maze, White Noise, and Slender. Among many others, he has also uploaded gameplay from video games such as Pokemon and Minecraft. Some of his most popular videos are Five Night at Freddy's 2 Animation, Funny Moments, with over 13 million views. Misty's Naked, question mark, Pokemon Uncensored Edition 3, viewed more than 3 million times, and Slender vs. Freddy, with over 2.3 million views. Collaborations. Although he is probably best recognized for being a solo game player, Yamimash increased his popularity thanks to a few collaborations with such YouTube gamers as Edge, 
with whom he uploaded 20 videos for the game Bloody Trapland, as well as other games including Terraria and Slendy Tubbies. He has also collaborated with Shane, better known by the nickname Aaron in the Knee. The two played such games as Legend of Zelda, Minecraft, and Yogbox. Their YouTube series for Minecraft is the longest they ever made, with more than 50 episodes. Yami Mosh has also worked with Markiplier on various videos. Controversy. Now, guys, I'm going to stop here just for a second, because if you look up this controversy online, and you go to pages like uh, Wikitubia or YouTuber fandom, things like that, here's what it says, and I'm going to just read verbatim. It says, in January 2016, Yami Mosh was the center of attention due to a scandal when another YouTuber known as Keemstar, or as we call him here in Japan, Hoshino Keemstar, uploaded a video revealing information that Yami Mosh was flirting with a 14-year-old girl to whom he sent pictures of his genitals, that's a nice YouTube way I can say it. Afterwards, Yami Mosh released his video called My Side Explained with his ex-girlfriend stating that he had a conversation with the girl, but he did not send any naked pictures, and accusing her of being an attention seeker. Now, that's his side, and this video has actually been taken down. I could not even find a re-upload of it. If you can, let me know. I would love to add it as evidence, but I did find quite a huge amount of logged videos kind of going back and forth. Now, from what I can tell, this is the same girl, the same 14-year-old girl that had talked to Minilad too, who you may know as a Minecraft YouTuber who also got into a scandal with messaging underage fans sexual uh, pictures, should we say? Sexual messages? Well, it seems like this also happened to Yami Mosh by the same girl. Now, she's 14. She is not to blame, okay? She is the child. He is the adult. He was 24 at the time. Let's listen to what evidence we have. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will come with me, it is time to go over to the playground, climb the ladder, and slide into the DMs. She posted this. Dude, are you holding up all right? Just saw the shitstorm with your girlfriend and that bird with the massive tits. Yummy Mash responding, yeah, I'm a bit of an idiot, but nothing I can do. I just got to get through this, and it's completely my fault. She responds with, did you say anything super bad to the booby lady? Like, full-on stuff? Or just mild flirting? Yummy Mash responding, I said, like, send me cute pics and yoga pants, etc. Yeah, pretty bad. She responds, uh, you can't really talk your way out of this one, laughing out loud. The more I think about it, the more I'm certain that humans weren't meant to have monogamous relationships. Yami Mash responding, yeah, maybe. Well, I'm in the shit anyway. I just have to get through this, apologize, and not do it again. A lot of people will be mad at me, that's for sure. She responds, y'all know shit happens, dude. You're only human. Your relationship was going down the shitter, and you were on the verge of dumping her anyway. We'd all be lying if we said that your eyes haven't wandered, or we've never flirted with anyone. When shit starts hitting the fan, God knows I certainly have. Yami Mash responding, yeah, we all make mistakes. We don't mean harm, I suppose, but sometimes we cause it. She responds, it might just simply be a case of coming clean to her, telling her that you weren't going to end it with her, etc. When did the thing with Knockers McGee happen? Yami Mash responding, summertime. She was underage too, but she looks older. She responds, oh, fuck, Yami. How old was she? Yami responding, 14. Fuck my life. She responds, oh, fuck, 14? Jesus, did you know she was 14 at the time? Yami Mesh responding, meh, I'm so fucking stupid. Yeah, she had big boobs, though. I thought flirting was okay. She responds, oh, shit, dude. Dude, what on earth were you thinking? 
they could try and do you for some child grooming or something. Yami responding, yeah, they could, I guess, but I had no intent of having sex with her or anything. She responds, the pics you asked for, though, that could be seen as intent even if you had no real interest. What on earth made you ask for those pics? Yami responding, I'm just an idiot, man. She responds, if this girl goes public, you could be in a huge amount of shit. This wasn't the girl you were going to leave cat for, was it? Yami responds, well, I can't say that I want to deserve it, laughing out loud. Nah, the other girl was 20. She responds, that's something at least. Yami also says, I guess, man. I see an attractive girl and I flirt with them. She responds, did you ever do anything with a 14-year-old? Like, meet her or physically do anything with her? Yami responds, nah, nothing physical. She responds, fucking hell. Yami says, oh, fuck. She says, what? Yami says, oh, I'm fucked. She says, what's happening? Yami says, check his tweets, rip, linking my Twitter. She responds, fuck, why on earth did you flirt with the kid? Yami responds, I'm such an idiot. She responds, I mean, intent or not, surely you knew morally dodgy that was. Yami responds, yeah, it is morally dodgy, I know. Nothing I can do now, though, right? She then responds, there's no coming back from this one. Just do the right thing. You can't put what you've done right, but you can lessen the blow to the girl you flirted with. I think you may have just ruined three people's lives. Was there anyone else that you flirted with that you knew was underage? And uh, that's where the conversation ended. Yami Mash uh, stopped responding okay. to her after she asked Just a second there, Shingeki no Kobito Keemstar. Let's just stop, pause, and take a look at all these videos. See all these videos say, hey, Yami Mash is innocent. Some people even suggested that the mother and the 14-year-old child had set up a honeypot using pictures of the 14-year-old child herself, as you're about to see here in this little video, to try and grab Yami Mash by the balls and pull him into that pot of honey. Up, This is actually a picture of the girl. She was using these photos. And what you've got to realize is that the mom and her came onto the Keemstar show and talked about how Yami Mash had been sending all kinds of photos and nudes and being very flirtatious. Now, I believe all this is probably true. As you're going to see, we're going to play a buttload of messages that show the conversations he had. And, ooh, he's got himself into a sticky situation. But if that's a honeypot, it's a honeypot. Too bad you got caught. I know a lot of people might come out and say, hey, maybe the 14-year-old girl and the mom were the ones who worked together to make the honeypot. Yeah, you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe they did. But does that remind you of, uh, you know, any other sort of show? Maybe like a Chris Hansen produced show? A certain thing called To Catch a Predator. Um, yeah, those guys, when they got caught and they got turned out to be predators, they didn't get a get-out-of-jail-free card. The police were already there, ready to arrest them on the spot. Now, Yami Marshall was lucky he did not get arrested in this situation because the girl said she had too much anxiety and didn't want to press charges. So, even if the whole thing was a ruse, it was a honeypot, I personally do not think this lessens the blow of what has happened. Soon after this, Yami Mosh's girlfriend, Jessica, broke up with him, left the scene, and it just gets worse from here. Let's listen to the messages read out by one of Keemstar's staff who shows us exactly what Yami Mosh had to say to this 14-year-old girl. Statement. Here it is. I first tweeted Yami Mosh June 18th asking him if he could follow me so we could talk about his meetup at Eurogamer, a gaming convention. He then tweeted back, telling me to add his Snapchat. Me, then bundled with excitement, added his Snapchat. We started talking about the convention and how much he had helped me through tough times. He asked my age and I told him 14. He then told me a parent has to take me and he started telling me about personal family problems, and that I'm not alone. I told him I had made him some fan art and I couldn't wait to meet him. He then said he couldn't wait to meet me and see what I had made for him. We were speaking like normal people. Then I told him I was putting my t-shirt on and he said it looked great on me. 
We got to talking about the event again, and he said he would meet me out front because I couldn't get a ticket. Most nights we were up late talking until early hours when he would go to sleep. This went on for about a month. We then added each other on Facebook, and he told me to ring him. I then told him to ring me. I sent my number and he called me nearly twice a week and we stayed on the phone calls from usually 2 to 4 a.m. and he started flirting with me. He sent me a picture of his penis and then said it was an accident. He continually asked me for cute pics on calls and texts. On October 5th, my best friend told my mom and police and social services child protection team got involved and they came to take my statement and then asked if I would want to press charges and take it to court but due to my mental health problems I couldn't bear it they said I was to block him on social media and that they would issue him a harboring notice as far as I'm aware this has been done the police had all the evidence they needed to press charges Copies of Snapchat messages, proof of phone calls, my itemized phone bill, his number, Facebook messages. Also, he invited me on a day out to the cinema. At this point, the jig was up. Yummy mosh was yummy mosh potatoes because he got a lot of sticky gravy on his fingers, if you know what I mean. I don't know where that came from. Uh, I'm a dad, so that was a dad joke. Um. Anyway, Yami Mosh was busted. He was caught redder than red-handed. He was neon red-handed, and uh, his career took quite a dive after this. Of course, as always, there were the obligatory deniers and believers, and the battle was fought between those who wanted to find him free and justified of not having done any of this and there were those who even ranted and raved that this had been done to other people and they had been tricked by this same girl in fact i'll even read some of these messages just to play devil's advocate but at the end of the day yami mash was cooked one plucky little fan wrote a note as he was a diehard fan of all these old school gamers his name was Pewdie Cry, not to be confused with PewDiePie. He said, With the whole Yami Mush situation shown on Drama Alert, I just thought I would show some stuff about Sarah. Sarah is the girl who uh, actually called Yami Mush out, the one who was 14 years old and colluded with her mother to go ahead and expose Yami Mush. The girl that framed him since she deleted her Twitter. Number one, uh, I wish I had more screenshots, but she has been going after and flirting with uh, famous YouTubers such as Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, and PewDiePie, as well as Syndicate, but uh, only Yami Mosh was the one to reply. That's the only way he looks guilty. Uh, yeah, that might be true, but, uh... He did reply. He took the bait. He fell into the honey pot. He's a sticky, sticky fly. Uh-oh. Number two. These photos are very provocative, and she's apparently 14. This isn't victim-blaming or slut-shaming. It's common sense, to be honest. If you are underage, do not post photos where it looks like you are in your underwear or with your boobs three quarters of the way out of your shirt that can be taken as child pornography oh wow a really great take there from the fans thanks so much um yeah so you can pretty much see who his defenders were it didn't go so well another fan who really missed the relationship between markiplier and yami mosh wept openly in a letter where he wrote this is probably going to get downvoted, but I, the only one that realizes Mark pr pretty much left Yami just because of money. It wasn't healthy to be considered friends with Yami Mash anymore after Kim Star accused him of being a pedo. Mark didn't bother standing up for him, yet he stood up for PewDiePie when the Wall Street Journal was attacking him and making fun of him because Pewds has one thing going for him. <laughs> my fans and more money. <laughs>
Okay, easy there, big guy. Uh, these are uh, pretty different, I'd have to say. Uh, the Wall Street Journal is a group of pseudo-intellectuals pretending to be journalists and reporters. They suck. It doesn't matter what they say about anybody. I don't take their word seriously at all. Garbage reporters make garbage reports. On the other hand, pedos are garbage and are garbage that should be thrown out. Very different situations here, bucko. His career took quite a dive after this. Markiplier split away from him and pretty much refused to ever work with him again, which some people blame Markiplier for throwing him under the bus, but um, I'm going to be honest with you, if I found out another one of my YouTube friends was playing around with little kids and sending them nasty messages, I'd probably cut off uh, all communication too. It's, it's a healthy thing to do, guys. And uh, that's uh, where the story kind of dwindles down into the days of Yamimash having 1.3 million subscribers and about uh, maybe 5,000 to sometimes as low as 1,000 views per vid. And all you kids out there who want to listen or watch scary videos on YouTube, you don't need to go to them creepypasta channels. Go see a real ghost town when you check out Yami Mosh's channel now. It's spooky! And welcome to uh, my latest vlog style video. And today I'm going to be talking about a topic that a lot of uh, guys are talking about on my uh, on my channel. So you guys may have noticed, uh, but well, yeah, basically, more or less, and it's been like the top comment now on a lot of my videos. Uh, it's, it's just discussing how my channel has uh, dropped a lot. My, my views have gone down. My channel is dead, more or less, and uh, and that's more or less like the uh, the top comment section on uh, the vast majority of my videos. Wait a second. Ho hold on. Hold on just for a second here. Did this guy record his past apology and my channel is dead video with a green screen in the background? Okay. Can you guys give me just a second in the editing room? I'll be right back. Okay, let's see. Uh, Got to find FBI open up. All right, select. Okay, put that on green screen. Overlay over green. Okay, choose background color green. Put that in there. Add sound and... Uh, and that's more or less like the, uh, the top of the uh, Yeah, sorry. I, I just, I had to. Okay, anyway, back to his My Channel is Dead speech. For a long time. And I have nobody to blame but myself. And it's the truth. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it because those, those comments are correct. I wouldn't say my channel is dead per se, but my channel is it's not what it used to be. And I just wanted to talk about this today. And honestly... At the end of the day, when it, when it comes to- My dude, I'm gonna stop you there. Okay. The reason your channel tanked is because you were flirting with a 14-year-old girl, whether it be a honeypot or not. From this point on, Yami Masha's channel dipped down into the low 6,000s, 5,000s, 1,000 views. Uh, views not even as low as my channel, and I'm a 2,000 subscriber channel. Finally, about 11 months ago, Yami Mosh finally called it quits after trying to plug away at this and keep something going. I think there was a couple other things that played into his channel not continuing on. Number one, nothing really seemed to update. He did the kind of same thing over and over again, playing some of the newer horror games that were coming out, but doing them with a can that looked like it was from 2016, not really having much commentary. And when he did, it was depressing at best. There wasn't a lot of excitement or joy that needed to be seen within his playthroughs of different aspects of different games. He never moved on to better equipment. He never moved on to a better microphone. And sadly, he just never progressed beyond the whole let's play thing. And Everybody and their mom's got a Let's Play. For Christ's sakes, there's Skyrim grandma at this point. So anyway, guys, sad but true, this was the end. This is Yummy Mash, and welcome to Five Nights at Wario's. It's another Five Nights at Freddy's spin-off game. Yeah, here. Ding, ding. What's this? Uh, the radio's malfunctioning. Can we go up this, uh, this elevator here? I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but 
a little bit scared, you know? Well, as you can probably see from the comparison of videos from 2015 to 2020, not a lot changed in the quality of Yami Mosh's video. He did not branch out from anything other than uh, scary game playthroughs, Five Night at Freddy's Clones, and a little bit of Slender mixed in, but nothing epic, nothing changed, nothing new, and it's kind of sad, you know? I wanted to see this guy succeed. I wanted to see him climb the ladder of subscribers with Markiplier and PewDiePie. But here he is, a retired titan, a fallen man who began at the beginning of this amazing platform and could have climbed to the very pinnacle, yet he just couldn't keep it in his pants. What the heck, man? What is wrong with YouTube gamers these days? Nah, it's a little bit of every community, isn't it? Um, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I would love to hear in the comments below. I hope you like what I did here today with this video. It's something new I'm trying out, trying to get it better and better for the subscribers. A lot more editing obviously involved. Got some of my drawings here at the end, as you can probably see now. So I'm still including the art. And I would like to shout out a few uh, patrons today. Some of my top tier patrons include Dmitry Theodaski at $1.50. Gina Britton at $1. We've got Oni's Arcade at $1. We've got Tand Borst, uh, Tand, Tand Borste, Tand Borste at $1. One pound, sorry. Uh, we've got uh, Tom at $1.50. And uh, let's move on to the next tier. Mary Carmen at five dollars. Dolphy Zombie at uh, Dolphy Zombie ninety. Sorry, at five dollars. I was about to say Dolphy Zombie at ninety dollars. <laughs> I've got uh, who else here at five dollars? Anybody else? Nope. Moving on to the next one is twenty-five dollar tier. Lobby one two three. Maybe Lobby one two three. Not totally sure. Twenty-five dollars. Nas at twenty-five dollars. And I think I got them all until the $100 tier. Wow, I have $100 tier patrons. That's kind of kind of blows my mind. Chris L at $100. Thank you so much. Brandon, my bro, at $100. That's the Aishteru tier because that means I love you. And Laurent Bocelli at an amazing 1,000 euros. Oh my God, my mind is blown. Guys, I hope you like what you heard today. If I earned your subscribe, then please, please, please hit that button. I'm begging you so much, please. Or maybe the like button, that's okay too. Maybe a comment. Hey, let's talk down in the comments below. I usually answer as many as I can as soon as this video releases and try to have a great conversation with you guys because you guys are amazing. And uh, even if you don't like it, you know, hit the dislike button. That counts as interaction. Leave me a mean message. Tell me to go suck a bag of dicks. I don't care. That's fine. Maybe you didn't like me. Anyway, guys, as always, I've been the Inksmith. I hope to see you again real soon. And I also hope you have a great rest of the day.